hey guys now we are in the re framework topic which is much awaited topic in this video i am going to talk about how do you really prepare for the exam on the re framework topic i'll give you some of the very important clues for you to prepare okay so let's get started now here our topic is how do i prepare this is a very this is a big subject and there could be multiple questions coming from re framework you all must know now how do i prepare from where do i start first of all before even you get on to preparing for the exam you must have a fair idea a fair idea on re framework how it functions okay so for that there is a 2 hour video all the video that i have on my channel i have clubbed them all together and this is the 2 hour video you must watch you have to spend time take your time understand re framework i have given lot of examples first you should have i hope as you are preparing for the exam you must have already gone through that right at least you are aware of re framework in a fair way if so then you should get on to this video now let's see what should i prepare for for the exam point of view okay now for the exam point of view now when you open the re framework uh, i think most of you might have got this latest update 2022.10.1 and after that there is a bit of structural changes right you can see this blue lines coming do not worry about it things remains almost the same your concepts remains almost the same so let's see for me to prepare for the exam what are the things one has to know right so first thing i will tell you open the project tab open the project tab and in the project tab there is something called data folder okay open this and there is something called config file very very important file click on this file and your config file should come okay preparing the config file is very important now what should you exactly prepare look at all the three tabs carefully settings constants and assets settings right for example if a question comes where do you write the q name is it in the constant sheet or is it in the settings sheet you are aware but you in the exam you might choose a wrong answer if you don't really remember properly so spend enough time at least 10 minutes to go through all the definitions go through all the three tabs one by one write it down right before the exam you should at least go through those things just quickly go through it so settings here you provide the queue name here also you provide the queue folder name okay for example i'll ask you another question let's say a developer has designed his project in the classic way in the classic way in the classic folder in the orchestra classic folder does he need to provide the queue folder name in the config file settings tab answer is yes or no so if you have read this definition you would definitely answer this so you know let's read this definition here we provide the queue folder name which is there in your orchestrator let me show you the orchestrator so the orchestrator this queues are dependent on the folder right i can have let's say i am going to create a queue called q1 and the same q1 with the same name i can also create in the other folder because the queues are folder specific not tenant specific so they are folder specific so a queue can same name can be given in different folders right okay so that's why when you are you know that's why the if, if you well, that's why that specific area is there where you have to enter the uh, folder name but if you read the definition what it says the value must match a folder defined in orchestrator and queue specified as orchestrator queue name should be created in this folder for classic folders leave the value field empty for classic folders we are saying you leave it empty only for the modern folder you have to enter it so this reading this definition is very very important for all, likewise for everything okay constants now for max retry max con consecutive for all of this i have a video for all of this for example max retry right if you go to google so i'll cover a few more videos on um, re framework on small small areas that you need to focus let's say max retry uh, uh, ui par 
So you can see for all of this I have explained max retry, max consecutive. You can see right all these videos are there. You can always take benefit from them. I hope you have already understood. But before the exam, just go through it once again, okay? And if not, just by reading the definition also you will understand the description what is written here. If you read through this, this is also help you. Okay, max retry, max consecutive, retry number, right? Retry uh, transaction should mark job as faulted. So all of this definition, do not miss a single one. Read and understand entirely. Same way for asset. So if you see the settings tab, it works as a dictionary, right? So if I take the name config uh, or in the bracket, if I say orchestrator queue name, then whatever name I have provided here it is going to pick that. Right, but in the asset, even though you write config uh, so and so, and the asset value will be picked up. But again, this asset value is exactly stored in orchestrator, not in um, not here. Right, it's not defined here. It will always, as per the value, it is going to pick it from the orchestrator. You are just writing the name of the asset, but the value will be picked from the orchestrator. So this kind of a functional knowledge you must have. Okay, but here the Q1. The REV framework is not reading from the orchestrator. It is going to read it directly from the file, the queue name. And accordingly, it, will, it is going to act. But for the asset name, it will read the file name. But again, it will go to orchestrator and fetch the details from there. Whatever the value is there for that asset, it is going to fetch it. Getting it? So like that functional knowledge should be there. That is the important point. Okay, what is what I said? Read config file carefully. Okay, this is very important. Now the second important point when it comes to preparing for the RE framework. Okay, second is you go to this framework. There are so many different XAML files. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Okay, all these XAML files are important. What are the job of all these XAML files? You must understand and how they function. You must understand. Okay, at least any question comes in RE framework, you should answer all the questions. Okay, they'll be slightly lengthy, but again, if you read through and if you have an understanding of all of this, you'll be able to answer it. Now, for example, let me ask you one question here. Uh, okay, reading of config file. Now, tell me out of all the XAML file, if someone has to read the config file, right? Uh, in, the, in the RE framework, if the config file is read, which XAML file is used? Is it init all settings, init all applications, init get? So, what is that? So it has to be, so where do you find that answer? So many people will be confused. It could be init all settings. It could be init all applications. Okay. So this functional knowledge is important for the exam. So if you see, if you go to initialization block, okay, if I double click on this. Now when you read, uh, when you have, when you are preparing for RE framework, right? Why is it? Not? Okay. When you're preparing for RE framework, remember to use this button. Okay, there is something called collapse all. First thing, when you are getting inside a block, you must collapse all. Okay. Okay. When once you are getting inside a block, always collapse all. If you restore the see, lot of things are coming, you will be confused. First, you col collapse all, then go one by one. So, what do you see in this block? You see a state. You have read about state machine, right? So it is a state which has an entry and exit. In the entry block, they are having something called try catch block. Now, inside the try block, right, there's an exception written here. If you see, assign system exception. So, all this you have to read carefully. Okay. Now, let's go inside the try block. Inside the try block, there are four different actions. Let's click on it. Then, these are the four different actions there inside this. Now, one of them is init all <coughs> application. So, let's open, go inside this, right. Then click on open workflow. Init all applications. Okay. So here, uh, so this is an um, you know this is this is, uh, brings me a new format, the new format, um, right? So now, um, likewise, you have to. What I'm trying to say is, likewise, you have to get inside each of it. Okay, each of it and understand. If not, directly from this XAML file, right? Just click on this. For example, init all settings. I want to know what is there inside this. So simply click on it. That is one way of navigating inside each of this or simply click, click on the XAML file and open it. So in this XAML file, if you see, this is responsible to read the config file, right? If you see, it is reading the config file. Okay. So likewise, you have, you should have a functional knowledge what each XAML file doing and how they are reading data and how that re uh, read data is being utilized. Okay. 
so so if you see out config uh, uh, row name dot to string what is the meaning of this so this is the new format which comes up go to go to my video because your exam will be in the older format so please watch my rfm of video end to end make notes and have a functional understanding how each and everything are working okay that is important so that's all i would like to say in this video um, so second thing is open each xaml file and study this is important right and then um, 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 you know you should have functional knowledge functional knowledge means how things are working for example retry right so what happens when when it has to retry what number what is that io dot retry which number get um, uh, increased right every time uh, so all that functional knowledge i have explained in this video to our video um, this video okay entire one small small thing so spend enough time two hours time you spend in this video or three hours time or four hours time you spend in this video this is important because you will have lot many questions only from our framework okay so spending enough time will always help you so go through this entire video once again if you have already gone through just go through once again make note of everything each block one by one what they are doing how they are working and also go through this videos max retry max consecutive and all that okay so all these videos are very very important just type that word whatever you have doubt type the word and try to see i must be having one or the other video on those specific areas try to take benefit if not your documentation will be there look for documentation forum link and all the other things you should look that is how you should do preparation in the upcoming video i will come up with very very specific questions okay first you go through this today uh, take your time then move on to the next topic next video there i'll ask you very very specific questions and you will be able to utilize your study that you have done today to answer those specific questions and i'm going to help you so i'll come up with more such videos on rpm work this is not the last video i'll come up with more videos to help you how can you answer many questions coming around rpm work so thank you guys for this let's meet in our next video bye bye